Da 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 It's the Riff Show. Brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Pittsburgh. All right, hello everyone. We are back for episode two. And for this episode, we're going to be talking about animals. So we're going to be discussing all types of different critters and interesting things about them. For this, I have two of my other animal lovers with me. I have Miss Emily and Miss Chelsea with me. How are you guys doing? Great. Awesome. <laughs> well, glad to hear it. Um, so we're going to watch my video first. And the, what I talked about was, I mean, we have 7 million different types of animals that live on our planet. And that's a lot to keep track of. So we're going to talk about how scientists have split them into groups so we can learn more about them. So let's take a look at that. Did you know there are around 7 million different types of animals? That's a lot to keep track of. While each animal is unique, some of these animals share similar characteristics. Scientists split these animals into different groups based on their similarities to easier study them. So let's learn about some of these groups. The most popular group of animals is called chordata. Animals in the chordata group were placed together because they all have spinal cords or backbones. This group includes many of our favorite animals, tigers, sharks, snakes, eagles, and many more are part of this group. Even us humans are part of the chordata group, thanks to our spines that keep us nice and tall. Since there are still over 60,000 animals in this group, scientists split these animals into even smaller groups based on other features they have. One of those smaller groups is one you might have heard of before, mammals. Once again, humans find ourselves a part of this smaller group. Things we share with other mammals are that we produce milk to feed our children and that we all have some type of fur or hair. Some other groups animals with spinal cords are split into are birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Reptiles all have scaly skin and include snakes, lizards, alligators, and turtles. Amphibians are born in water, but when they grow up, they start to live on land. The most famous amphibian is the frog. An entirely different group of animals is called arthropods, Arthropods all have hard exoskeletons that protect their bodies. Think of animals that might seem crunchy, like crabs, scorpions, spiders, and beetles. The last group of animals we'll talk about are mollusks. Mollusks have hard shells to protect their bodies, sort of like arthropods. The difference between them is that mollusks also have a very soft part that lives inside their shell, where the body of arthropods are hard all over. Some popular mollusks are snails, clams, and squids. There are still many, many other groups of animals. Some of these groups include animals that you, or even I, have never even heard of before. Animals that live in the deepest parts of the ocean, or hidden underneath rocks. But thanks to scientists, they all have been placed in a group so we can learn more about them. So next time you're outside and come across a squirrel or a rabbit or an ant, look at it closely. Does it have fur? Does it look crunchy? Because maybe now you can be the scientist and tell people which group they belong in. All right, so there you have it. Those are some of the groups that many of our animals in the world are split into. Now, of the 7 million animals that live on our planet, do you all have a favorite animal? I know that my favorite animal is the panda because they're cute and they're cuddly and they're big and they might seem dangerous if you look at them, but they're really just um, really kind souls at uh, heart. So my favorite animal is the panda. Chelsea, what about you? What's your favorite animal? I have so many but if I had to pick, I would say the marmoset. Okay. It's like a little monkey, and it likes to grab and hug people. So if you ever get to hold a monkey, hold a marmoset. <laughs> okay, very cool, a marmoset. I actually haven't even heard of that before. So that's very cool. I'll have to look into that. And Emily, you actually did a whole video about your favorite animal. 
So do you want to give the kids and everybody watching a little preview of what um, what animal that's going to be? Yes, my favorite animal is a sloth. And they are really cool because they're really lazy, but they're super cute. And I'll tell you all about them. Hi, friends. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite animals, sloths. Sloths live in the tropical rainforest, and most of them live in the same tree for their entire life. First, we need to discuss what categories sloths fall into in the animal kingdom. Do you think they are a mammal, an insect? A reptile? Go ahead, take a guess. If you guessed mammal, you are correct. There are two types of sloths, the two-toed sloth and the three-toed sloth. So let's count how many toes are on our sloth here. One, two, three. So this is a three-toed sloth. So one of my favorite facts about sloths is that they are vegetarians, which means that they eat the leaves in their trees that they live in. But because they're vegetarians, it takes them a really long time to digest their food in their tummies, which means they only go to the bathroom about once a week. When they do go to the bathroom, they have to travel down to the forest floor. This can be very dangerous since predators live down in this area. Finally, we need to discuss the thing sloths are most famous for, and that is sleeping. Sloths in the wild sleep around the same amount as humans, which is about 8 hours a day. But sloths that live in captivity, like at the zoo or at the Pittsburgh aviary, can sleep for up to 20 hours a day. And that's it from me, everybody. I hope you learned something new about sloths today, and I hope that if you're ever feeling a little lazy, you just embrace your inner sloth. All right. Thank you, Miss Emily, for that. That was very cute. Now, um, I wanted to ask you, have you ever actually seen a sloth in real life, in person? I have not, and the reason is because I'm very afraid of birds, and I won't go to the aviary to go see the sloth. <laughs> Well, maybe one day at the zoo or something that you'll get to finally uh, encounter your beloved uh, creature. It will be amazing. So we've talked about a lot of different animals, and we've already mentioned that there are so many on this planet. But there used to be even more, and unfortunately, some of them are no longer with us. They went extinct. So, Miss Chelsea, you're going to talk about some what the idea of an animal being extinct is and uh, what that means, right? Mm -hmm. When something is extinct, that means that it no longer exists in the wild or at all. When we think of animals that are no longer around, we usually think of ones from a long time ago, like dinosaurs and woolly mammoths. But animals continue to go extinct even now. Like this funny looking guy, the Chinese paddlefish that went extinct in December 2019. Some animals that we thought were gone were just hiding. The Vietnam mouse deer is a deer the size of a rabbit that we thought was extinct for almost a hundred years. In 2019, we were able to get them on camera again. This bird was extinct for 20,000 years before it evolved back into existence. Evolution is the process of physical changes happening over a long, long, long time that make it easier for creatures to live in their environment. Animals can go extinct on their own or with human intervention, like when we cut down the trees where they live. It's important for us to think of the animals and be extra good friends to them, which sometimes means leaving them alone. Okay, thank you, Miss Chelsea, for that. You bring up a very good point that we are just a small part of a big environment, and we must all look out for each other and protect our fellow critters that live on this planet with us. So that is the end of our episode number two. I hope you all learned a little bit about the animals that we hold so dear to our heart. Thank you, Miss Emily and Miss Chelsea for helping out. I appreciate it a lot. And as we leave you, we're going to show you some pictures and videos of probably the, our favorite animals that we hold dear to our heart, our pets. So we'll see you next time. Take care. A-N-I-M-A-L-S A-N-I-M-A-L-S Animals Big
one small, one short, and tall one. Some like to fly up in the sky. Some like to run just for the fun. So much to learn. So much to learn about animals.